Hey Wushu World, this is Brandon Sugiyama from Jio.com and we're back with another interview. This time our guest is Mario Martinez. He's an instructor at Professional Martial Arts Academy, coach of the USA Wushu team, nationally certified judge, international coach at the Nanjing Youth Olympics Sports Lab, and commentator for the International Wushu Federation's World Wushu TV. So even if you've never met Mario, you've definitely heard his voice. I am Mario Martinez. My name is Mario Martinez. This is Mario Martinez. Mario Martinez. My name is Mario Martinez, and I will be one of your commentators for today. My name is Mario Martinez. I'm from Sterling, Virginia. I'm a coach at Professional Martial Arts Academy. From a spectator standpoint, it's very difficult to tell like one competitor from the other. And one of our all-time favorite athletes, Michele Giordano from Italy. I think really, really, really hardcore wushu people just want accuracy which can be challenging because you're talking about it live. Jump outside 540 into a horse stance. And then from people who don't know Wushu, with them what we try to do is explain the rules. Perfect A score, perfect C score, overall B score of 2.60. Explain any deviations and why some athletes did well, some athletes did poorly. That hand down is really costing athletes a significant point value. We're typically elevated in the bleachers and we're able to see the whole floor. You know, we're trying to do a lot more stuff with social media, so we're getting feedback. So, hey, if there's something that you guys want to hear about, tell us. Looks like we've got some messages coming in from San Diego, Alex Mintran and Mark Moran in Hawaii. Thank you for watching. We're trying to make it more engaging with the audience. So I'll be doing Junior World Wushu Championships in Brazil. So the way that we typically prepare, right, I try to look at previous world videos. I start writing names of athletes that stand out or the previous winners. I have like a file where I have all of the world championships, medal placings, and just as much information as I can gather. One big thing is everyone's on social media now. So I try to follow as many athletes as possible. So you can start to get a sense of like, what's this person about? Like, what's their story? In my view, I think you have to do each athlete justice. So you have to know something about each athlete. And up next, we have Stephanie Lim from the United States. She's a two-time U.S. team athlete and earned three gold medals at the 2014 Pan American Championships in Costa Rica. To me, what's interesting about the sport is what that athlete brings to Wushu. He's our 11th World Bronze Staff Medalist and our 12th World Wushu Championship Silver Staff Medalist. Because everyone in Wushu has like an amazing story, right? It's how do we tell that story in that minute 20 that the athlete is competing. It's really challenging. Um, and then when Nanjing came about, there was this idea that the IOC president had, which was the sports lab concept. Let's create a venue where it's an activity that people who are at the Olympics can come and participate in. And then we start cycling in different sports that are on the verge of potentially becoming an Olympic sport in the future. It was roller sports, it was speed climbing, um, skateboarding was there, it was wushu. Let's let people come in and see it and try it so that in the future, Sure, we can see what the interest is in a lot of these sports and then these sports get like some spotlight. I think in the past it's been like these are the sports that are locked into the Olympics and the sense that I get is that in the future there may be potentially some opportunities for sports to come in and come out. The Chinese Wushu Federation and the International Wushu Federation got together half delegation of Chinese athletes and China coaches and then you get a half delegation of international athletes and international coaches. So I was selected as one of the coaches Oleksiy Nosec from Ukraine was the other international coach. And then there were also athletes from all over the world that were selected. Daria Tarasova, Mikhail Giordano, uh, Justin Benedict from the US, world caliber athletes. They had to perform every day, two times a day. And then we would coach, I think four times a day. The IOC president came because it was his, his idea to do the whole thing. We had some Wushu people who we performed for him. And then he was a fencer. So Daria Tarasova from Russia grabbed a broadsword and was like, look, it's the same thing. And so, yeah, there was a little bit of an exchange with him. Yeah. Nanjing was a phenomenal opportunity. While we were there, I was speaking to the Federation people from speed climbing, skateboarding. And the most interesting thing to me was that we're not so different. Their sports may have more funding. They may have gotten a little bit further than where Wushu is, but we're really not all that different in how we're structured. They didn't have like one major organization or federation that was like, these people are under our umbrella. These are pro athletes from this umbrella. Skateboarding was by far like everybody was flocking to their area. And you could see 
how the IOC saw the draw and how much that pulled the young demographic. What I learned the most, I think, is that the tighter knit your community is, the better chance that it has like on a world stage. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of development in wushu training over in a lot of countries over the last 10 years. And I think you're starting to see a lot more podium finishes from a lot of countries, or they're placing at the top of the pack, even when they're competing head to head to China. Wushu development training wise has always come from China. We can't train six, seven, eight hours a day. So seeing what kind of training protocols athletes are implementing that are successful for them would be invaluable to share with the Wushu world. I think initially, like in the US, there just wasn't that many coaches. There were a lot of China coaches. And so they taught athletes the way that they trained in China. But then as more of the country's athletes became coaches, start to learn kind of like what works. Like I know when I transitioned from being an athlete to being a coach, started to kind of streamline the process for my athletes because can't train how they train in China. So I think that athletes retiring, becoming coaches, using knowledge that they acquired in their countries, training under the conditions that they have to train, I think that's made better athletes. And I think it's only gonna get better each generation that becomes coaches, then shares more information, we learn more, and then it's, it's just elevating the level of athletes. I mean, it's been said in like sports science everywhere, right? The reason that China is so successful is pool of athletes that they have to choose from. It's an infinite resource. They're picking athletes based on the best physical attributes for their sport. Well, that's not the case in every other country. Like if I get an athlete that comes in and they have aspirations to make the team, he may not be specifically built for highest level competition. So it takes a lot of thinking, okay, what are the needs of the athlete? What do I need to do to train him? It's not like he fits into this cookie cutter program and I can just train him exactly how I train every elite level athlete and he'll be a champion. It does, like it's not, you can't work that way. You have to think about the needs of the athlete and then kind of address those things and then ele elevate them as an athlete so that they can improve their wushu. If you're not viewing at your training methodology continually improving areas where you're weak and you're not being challenged by your training, I think you're not setting yourself up to improve as fast as you could. What I've observed in my experience has been athletes will kind of get into this, this cycle of, I'm just training. And then they become so proficient at training that it stops becoming challenging. And stepping away into more of like gym fitness, you know, strength training, I got to see a lot of people who had very specific sports mindsets. And so I took a lot of that stuff and brought it into my coaching protocols. And I think that's the only way that you can become a, a better coach is trying things and see what works. You know, my main drive is just becoming a better coach, uh, being able to take athletes further than I ever got, learning, learning and continuing to better myself so that it can benefit my athletes. If you enjoyed the interview, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where I'll be posting new interviews and content very soon. Thanks for watching.